Hey fellow fishermen and fisherwomen, my name is Dustin and right now I am headed offshore to some structure and on my way there I found all these birds you'll see here crushing bait on the surface and I knew there was some uh, possibly Spanish mackerel and bonito in the area, uh, still a little bit early for albies in my part of Long Island Sound. Uh, so right now I'm just, uh, I made a few casts with um, to number two deadly dick uh, just to see what was out there. Snapper. Yeah, so it's just a small snapper bluefish and uh, not really what I'm interested in, but I'm going to make a few more casts just to see if there's any other species mixed in. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep, so just another snapper blue. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to waste too much time on these. I, you know, we have limited time here, and I want to get out to the spot. So uh, we're going to head out now. All right, so we're about a mile offshore now over some structure, and the theme of this trip really for me is experimentation. Um, I'm going to try some different baits and some different lures for the same species I normally go after, um, and I think there's some really interesting takeaways here. And this porgy is the first example. I caught it on a Nomad Design Ridgeback 40 gram jig, uh, with two assist hooks on it, and then I added a treble to the bottom. But I mean, in the future, if you're if you don't have any squid or sandworms or whatever you use for porgy around, um, it's definitely a valid method. Okay, so what I find more interesting than catching porgy on jigs is actually what turned the fluke bite on for us and at this point we had fished around this piece of structure for about 30 minutes um, using our typical fluke rigs with you know bucktails and gulp and all we could catch was sea robins so I know a lot of people use sea robin strips as bait sometimes so I said you know what the heck why not um, so here you'll see uh, I'm just stripping up this sea robin um, I cut both of the tails off and then split each tail in two pieces so you got four little bait strips all together um, and then I threaded on the jig and um, it, it actually worked out really well. We got, um, well you'll see here, we got a couple of fish um, right back to back. And this is also my first time using this bucktail. It's called the Game Over and it's just it's made by s, &S Bucktails. Um, I use their normal bucktails all the time, the John Skinner series, but this one's got a longer profile. I think it looks a bit more like a squid and uh, it's going to swim a little bit differently through the water just because of its shape. But uh, also a big fan of it, I'll certainly be using it more in the future. There's a better fish. Oh, there we go. Target. Yeah, and that was the first fluke of the day, and it was on the um, on the sea robin strip. And this fluke is a short for the Connecticut 18 and a half inch limit, but still a nice fish nonetheless. Now a short fluke. Yeah, and that's another short fluke on the Sea Robin strip, and uh, I'm not complaining because it was a lot more action than we had on the gulp, which, I mean, sometimes the gulp bite, it just isn't there. I mean, as good as it works for fluke, some days, you know, they're just not having it, so it is good to have uh, other options around. All right, so you have to forgive me for missing the hookup on this fish, uh, but at this point in the trip, uh, I'd run out of sea robin strips, and somehow we couldn't catch any more, which I, I tell you what, if, uh, if you're not trying to catch these things, it's all you catch, and as soon as you want one, you can't find them. Uh, but I was out of strips, so I switched back to bucktails and gulp, 
and I caught this sea bass in a location where I've never caught any before, and um, it's pretty darn close to keeper size. It was 15 inches, and we have a 16-inch limit here in Connecticut. And I'll tell you, I've only caught one keeper this year. Um, it's just hard for me to get to deeper structure uh, further offshore in the kayak where a lot of them sit, uh, especially in this warmer weather. A lot of them are in 50, 60, 70 feet of water. Uh, it's just hard for me to get to. So getting one this size in this spot was... Um, it really influenced what I did um, in the next half of this video, which is the the very next day. I came back out here to the same spot, and uh, my goal is to catch a, a keeper sea bass. Okay, so this is the following day, and we're back on the exact same spot where we caught the sea bass yesterday. And uh, I'm using the same fluke rig with uh, gulp, and um, we're gonna see what happens. Good start. All right, so that was the first fish of this trip, and it was the right species. So uh, at this point, I knew I was uh, on the spot, and um, I didn't know this at the time, but I was about to get into the best sea bass bite I've been on all year, and uh, I'm just going to keep pounding the spot. Doubles. Yeah, so when they were coming up, I thought that that was my keeper, but you know, obviously when you've got uh, more than one fish on there, sometimes it can trick you into thinking you've got a bigger one than you actually do, but that's okay. Again, it was another good sign that, uh, you know, I was on the spot, so I'm just going to keep drifting this piece of structure, and, uh, you know, I'm still looking for the keeper. Species. So I know I said I am fishing for sea bass, but uh, I'm just in such a habit of fluke fishing because I do it most of the time. Um, I just Barely at this hooked. point I think I just refer to fluke as the right species, but um, you can definitely tell by you know when you've got a really strong pull and uh, really rapid head shakes. Um, you know, you, you can definitely tell these fish apart when you catch enough of them. Hmm. 
yeah, I really hate hooking these little guys. Um, you know, I don't want to cause them any harm. I want them to grow up and get big and, and all of that. But, man, they're aggressive. They, um, you know, it happens. If they're around, uh, they're going to take your bait. They're going to bite the tails off your gulp and cost you all kinds of money. So it happens. Yeah, and where I'm fishing here in the Long Island Sound, um, there's no shortage of porgy. So I guess no bottom fishing trip is complete without them. Uh, I have plenty in the freezer, so I'm not keeping any. But, uh, hey, they're fun. Damn, I got you. Another pair of them. It actually kind of feels like a fluke. He's got some cool blue on his eyes. Man, go grow up. All right, so that was actually the last fish of this trip that I had time for, so no keepers. But if you do want to see more keepers, uh, click one of the videos on your screen now to head over to my channel or just go there directly. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, uh, don't forget to like the video and please subscribe. Thanks so much.